Hello, this is Sister Charlene Winston. I'm coming to you today with this week's Sunday School Bible Study. Amen. We want to thank the Lord for us joining together once again to study the Word of the Lord as we become understanding of what is said in the Word, that we may be doers of the Word and not just hearers only. We want to thank God for watching over us this week and taking care of us. Uh, we're going to get ready, and our lesson for this week is a growing awareness, a growing awareness. And our lesson is coming from Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, the first verse through the twelve. And as we look at <clears throat> last week's lesson and this week's lesson, we know that uh, Paul is talking uh, to the Thessalonians about some serious uh, situation problems that they're uh, having and believing they're having, uh, believing that they're going through, uh, they're believing that they're coming up on. So we're going to uh, get ready to to begin to study what they're speaking about in this week's lesson as Paul talks to them to try to encourage them and give them understanding of the situation. Amen. We're going to first have prayer and then we'll get started with our lesson. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for watching over us, guiding us, and strengthening us. We thank you, Lord, for making a way out of no way. We thank you, Lord, that you are God Almighty, and without you, uh, beside you, there is no other. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us uh, throughout this week and bringing us to this point in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for taking us through all the uh, trials and tribulations that we went through. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are our rock and our uh, we do lean and depend on you. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, you is doing, and you shall do in each of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for, for uh, making a way out of no way. We ask you, Lord, uh, that you would open our eyes that we may see and our ears that we may hear and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to receive of your word as we go forth to be more doers of your word and not hearers only, that we understand your word to the point that we can walk in it or we can understand what it is speaking about. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Um, as we said, the lesson is a growing awareness, a growing awareness. And our lesson is coming from Second uh, Thessalonians, the second chapter, the first verse through the twelfth. And the scripture lesson takes read, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. I want to add at this point that this is from the uh, ESV version. And said, let no one deceive you in any way, but that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or objects of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Do, not, do you not remember? That when I was still with you, I told you these things. And you now you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. And, say, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Therefore, God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false in order that all may be condemned who did not believe in the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. 
<clears throat> Amen. As I said, this lesson is a strong and powerful lesson. It has a lot of uh, details in it that uh, if you're not uh, versed in the word, uh, you may miss, and uh, so that's why I, uh, we uh, we be uh, pulling in from the commentary to get a more open view and understanding of what Paul is speaking of at this time. Uh, begin at the first verse, it says, Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you brothers as they are coming together they want them to be aware that the situ of the situation in which they are in paul now undertakes to correct a misunderstanding that had risen in the minds of the saints concerning the coming of the lord jesus christ and the day of the lord the saints were suffering such severe persecution that it was easy for them to think that they were already in the part uh, in in the first part of the day of the lord which it was the tribulation period and rumors were floating around that the apostles himself believed and taught that the day of the lord had arrived so he must set the record straight uh, what they're saying here that uh, people were saying that Paul had sent out letters and was saying, preaching himself, that the day of the Lord had come or the tribulation had begun, but that that was not true. Uh, people were, were uh, making false accusations, and so uh, Paul had to get them straight and understand what was going on and not allow them to uh, stretch forth and go uh to the wrong extreme because with the wrong information it can get you in trouble and have you doing things that you shouldn't amen uh the second verse says not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us to the exact to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. That he didn't want them to let their mind be shaken or don't be alarmed by what people were saying or what they were saying that letters had come and people were were, uh, were faking letters and sending them saying that Paul was writing them. They, they was trying to destroy uh, the strength of the church because they was doing so well as we saw in... Um, our last week lesson, how Paul exalted them uh, because they were ha holding on tight, uh, do even in the face of adversement, even in the face of troubles and trials, they were holding on uh, st uh, strong and they were going forward, even with love. And say so it should be clear that the rapture is not the same as the day of the Lord. The Thessalonians was not worried that the Lord had come. They knew that he had not, but they were worried that the day of the Lord had begun. The intense persecution they were enduring made them think that they were in tribulation, the first phase of the day of the Lord. But the Thessalonians were not in fear that the day of Christ was at hand. They did not believe that Christ himself had came, and what they didn't think to uh, realize that uh, everything had pointed towards that Christ would come for his church before tribulation started. So they did not realize this, so they allowed uh, people's talking and their saying things to, to get them confused and to get their mind worried and, dis and distraught to, to try to get them and steal them uh, from the Lord. But the Thessalonians were not in fear that the day of the, the that the day of Christ was at hand, that would have meant release from their sufferings. Most pre-tribulations prefer the reading in the RV, the day of the Lord is not present. Paul's readers were afraid of the day of God's wrath had begun. <clears throat> and as we said, we know that this was not so, and it could not uh, be so, because it is believed that uh, Christ will come, and it is said that Christ will come for his church before the uh, uh, tribulation began. Third verse says, let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will come unless the re that day will not come unless the rebellion come first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Now, 
uh, before tribulation come, then you will have the rebellion and the lawless uh, this one will be revealed or uh, come forth. So uh, you got several things that has to happen uh, before that the, the tribulation began. But the, the the main thing that Christ had not come and got his church so that it's in itself let them know should let them know that uh, the tribulation had not begun, even though they were going through such severe persecution and so many uh, bad and awful things were going and, and happening to them. It said, now the apostle explains why they could not be in the day in that day. Certain events must take place first. After the rapture, these events will begin to happen. After the rapture, after after the rapture, uh, after Christ come for His church, then these events will take place. First, there will be a falling away of the apostasy. What does this mean? We can only assume that it refers to a wholesale abandonment of Christianity, a positive rejection of the Christian faith. Then a great world figure will arise as the character he is the man of sin or lawlessness. There is, that is the very abandonment of sin and rebellion. As his deity, he is the son of perdition. He is doomed to eternal judgment. And as we know, many people, uh, unfortunately, is falling after a man that is leading them into destruction, leading them into the wrong way because they're not following the word of the Lord. They're following man's law and not God's law, what is in the Bible. Or else they're allowing the man's uh, uh, ideals to be more important uh, than what the uh, word is saying. Amen. Uh, as we think about when Christ uh, was on earth and he uh, brought forth and said, you know, you, uh, Christ said that uh, you honor your father and mother, and if you don't honor father and mother, then you'll die to death. But uh, the, the, you changed it to say that if you say it is Corban that you, uh, and for your father and mother, then they don't have to even take care of father and mother, but it, it is excuse of them. Whatever I do is it, it, counted towards you because of what I've done, uh, which it does not uh, matter what man's uh, uh, laws and, and bylaws is. If it's not God's law, then it does not matter. It does not count. We still have to live by God. God does not change for us. We have to change for him. It said, who, <clears throat> verse 4, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be, to be God. Amen. We know many people uh, uh, think themselves uh, uh, very important, uh, 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 very astute in, in the word. And, and many times this is their downfall to, to, to who they are in Christ because they allow themselves to be uh, uh, lifted. They lift themselves up instead of allowing God to lift them up. Amen. And we do not want this to happen, but we do know that there will be one that steps forward uh, at the end of time and that will uh, uh, consider himself as God and he will uh, has have the ability to bring forth miracles uh, and make people believe that he is God, but he still is not God. It's that uh, he will violently oppose every form of divine worship and will enthrone himself in the temple of God in Jerusalem. This description clearly identifies him as Antichrist, the one who is opposed to Christ and who sets himself up in the place of Christ. And Daniel 9 and 27 and Matthew 24 and 15 show that this blasphemous action of the Antichrist takes place in the middle of the tribulation period. Those who refuse to worship him will be persecuted and many will be martyred. There will be those that change and turn over after the rapture, but they will uh, have to go through uh, the situation of the tribulation uh, dealing with this lawless one. And if they don't do what he wants, then many of them will be martyred. Many of them will be killed. But still, it is their 
to their advantage to hold on that they will have eternal life when all that is over. Amen. Fifth verse, do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things. Paul reminds them that he mentioned these things, talked to them about these things to expect them to come, and they had forgot. Uh, as things do uh, leave our mind, that's why Christ tells us, uh, God tells us to meditate on the word day and night, because we do forget things. We do uh, become short-minded with understanding of what is being uh what is we are supposed to remember. Amen. Paul used to tell the Thessalonians these things when he was still with them. However, with contradictory teaching being given to them, which seemed to be accurately describing the fierce persecution they were then enduring, they had forgotten what the apostle had said. We all forget too easily and need to be constantly reminded of the great truth of the faith. And the only way that we can be reminded of this great truth of the faith is by meditating on the word day and night, studying the word, knowing what the word says. Amen. Uh, the sixth verse says, and you know what is restraining him now so that he may be revealed in his time. What is causing him not to come forth at this time? There is a, a restraining against the lawless one. It said they knew what was restraining the full and open manifestation of the man of sin and what would continue to restrain him until the appointed time. This brings us to the third and great unanswered question in this chapter. The first is, what is the apostasy? The second is, who is this man of sin? The third is what or uh, who is the restrainer? The first part of verse 6, the restrainer is described in an impersonal way. What is restraining? But then in verse 7, it is a person, he who now restrains. E.W. Rogers put it clearly. It is something, uh, something and someone who wit wittily, purposely, and des des designly holds it in check with a view to, in to ensuring that the man of lawlessness is revealed in his own proper time. It is a proper time for him to be brought forth, and it's not at this time. Is that for the mystery of the lawless lawlessness is already at work. Only he who know who now restrains it will do so until he is out of the way. Even when Paul wrote, uh, the mystery of lawlessness was already at work. By this we understand that a tremendous spirit of disobedience to God was already stirring beneath the surface. It was at work in, my in mystery form. Not that it was uh, mysterious, but rather that it was not yet fully manifested. It was still in germ form. It said what has hindered the full display of this spirit, we believe that the presence of the Holy Spirit indwelling the church and indwelling every believer has been the restraining power. It is a many people that still believe. It's, it's a many people that still uh, do the will of the Lord, walk in his statutes, uh, walk after his word. There is many. As uh, God told uh, Elijah when he said that I, uh, uh, he was running from uh, the the people that was trying to kill him, and he told God that you know I am I'm the only prophet that left, and then God told him no I have seven thousand that have not bowed the knee. God always got his ram in the bush. He's always got his people that has not turned. He's always got someone that's willing to hold out. He said he will continue to exercise this function until he is taken out of the way. That is the rapture. The Holy Spirit will, we believe, leave the world in the same sense in which he came at Pentecost. That is the abiding indweller of the church and each believer will still be in the world con convicting people of sin and leading them to saving faith in Christ. His removal at the rapture does not mean that no one will be saved during the tribulation. Of course they will, but these people will not be members of the church, but rather the subject of Christ's glorious 
kingdom. Amen. Uh, the eighth verse says, And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and bring to nothing by the appearance of his coming. It said, After the church has been raptured to heaven, the lawless one will be revealed to the world. In this verse, the apostle skips over the career of the Antichrist and describes his ultimate doom. It uh, almost sounds as if he will be destroyed as soon as he is revealed, but that of course is not so. He is allowed to conduct the reign of terror described in verse 9 through 12 before he is brought down at Christ coming to reign. If we are right in believing that the man of sin is revealed after the rapture and, the, and he continues until Christ revealed revelation, then his mad career lasts approximately seven years, the length of the tribulation period. Verse 9, it said, the coming of the lawless one is by the activity of Satan with all power and false signs and wonders. The coming of the lawless one is in accordance with the working of Satan. His career resembles that of Satan because he is energized by Satan. He will display all kinds of miracles and signs and lying wonders. A miracle indicates supernatural power, but not necessarily divine power. The miracles of our Lord proved him to be the promised Messiah, not sim simply because they were supernatural, but because they fulfilled prophecy and were of such a moral nature that Satan could not have done them without harming his own cause. Amen. The 10th verse says, and with all wicked deception for those who are perishing because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. It's that many people uh, that goes to this point uh, and they come up with all sorts of excuses not to believe that he is the Christ. They are the ones that shall be in, in, in terminal damnation. It's that the Antichrist will un unscrupulously use every form of wickedness to deceive the perishing people, those who heard the gospel during the age of grace, but who had no love for the truth. If they had believed, they would have been saved, but now they are deceived by the miracles of the Antichrist. <clears throat> uh, verse 11, it said, Therefore God sends them a strong delusion so that they may believe what is false. If they're not going to accept, then they will believe that which is wrong. It said God actually will send a working of error that they should believe the lie. The lie, of course, is the Antichrist claim to be God. These people refuse to receive the Lord Jesus as God manifest in the flesh. When he was on earth, he warned man I have come in my Father's name, and you do not receive me. If another comes in his own name, him you will receive. John 5 and 43. So now they receive the man of sin who comes in his own name and demands worship as God. Light rejected is light denied. If a person sets up an idol in his heart, God will answer him according to his idol. Ezekiel 14 and 4. The Antichrist will probably be Jewish, it is thought. Ezekiel 28, 9 and 10. Daniel 11, 37 through 38. Jews would not be deceived by one posing as a Messiah unless he claimed to be descended from the tribe of Judah and from the family of David. The 12th and last verse says, In order that all may be condemned, who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in un unrighteousness. As we know from this passage, it seems that those who hear the gospel in this age of grace, but who do not trust Christ, will not have another opportunity to be saved after the rapture. If men do not believe the Lord Jesus now, they will believe the Antichrist then. It says here that they all will be judged because of their unbelief 
and their love of evil. This is reminiscent of Luke 14 and 24. For I say to you that none of those men who were invited shall taste my supper. We know that many people will be saved during the tribulation period. 144,000 Jews, for instance, will be saved and will be God's messengers in preaching the gospel of the kingdom throughout the world. Though, though their ministry, many others will be saved, but it seems that those who will be saved are those who never heard the gospel clearly presented during the this present age and who never deliberately refused the Savior. If they did not re receive, then they do have the opportunity. And this 144,000 could be uh, the uh, tree, the olive tree that is spoken of in Revelations where it says the olive tree, uh, the, the two olive trees will be a part of the, the two that will be uh, showing wisdom during the time of uh, when uh, Christ comes. Amen. That they will be, uh, this is after the tribulation. Amen. So the two olive trees will be those that come through the uh, tribulation with uh, believing in Christ. Those that had not heard the gospel, that had not had an opportunity to receive the word. They had not have had an opportunity to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. This is a wonderful and powerful lesson. I pray that you, uh, you know, think about this lesson, meditate on this lesson throughout the week, and, and take portions of it and, 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 and go over it and try to make sure that you have an understanding of what is being said, that we are to be watchful and not let uh, the world change our views and our thoughts uh, uh, with letters and forms uh, that this is the Christ. Uh, we, If it does not match the Bible, then we know it's not the Christ. And if Christ, Christ has not come to get his church, then the tribulation has not come, the rapture has not come, so we need to continue on in holding on until the end come. Amen. I pray you meditate on this wonderful lesson, and y'all have a blessed and wonderful week. I will see you all later.